These are pictures of the revolution in Iran back in 1979 that toppled the Shah who had ruled over Iran for decades. And these are pictures of Iran now. You see, the Islamic Republic of Iran has had to deal with multiple protests over the 43 years it has ruled over the country. But these ones in particular have brought people from all diverse backgrounds to protest against the government. And just like the ones like in 1979 that turned into a revolution, these have the potential to overthrow the government. So why are these protests occurring? And what's life like in Iran anyways? Firstly, Iran is a country located in the Middle East with Iraq, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Turkmenistan, Azerbaijan, Armenia and Turkey as its neighbours. It's also the only country in the world that has a coastline on the Caspian Sea along with a coastline along the Persian Gulf. The country has just under 94 million inhabitants. Of these, most are Muslim but Shia, not Sunni, like most of the wider Islamic world. Now Iran has an ancient and very rich history with human settlements in the area of what was then called Persia dating back to around 7000 BC but to understand the current situation we need to go back to 1941 when Iran was seen as sympathetic to the Axis powers by the outside world and so the British and Soviet forces coordinated an invasion of the country forcing the Shah to abdicate in favour of his son Mahmoud Reza Pahlavi although this was unimportant as by this time the Prime Minister was the main person making key decisions for the country. All of this changed however when Mohammed Mossadegh became Iran's new Prime Minister in 1951, a fierce nationalist and wanting to end or at least negotiate the oil concessions given to the British, he would also alienate the Shah by reducing his financial allowance. This made the British and soon the Americans help the Shah overthrow the democratically elected PM increasing his influence over the country immensely. From here, he would rapidly begin dismantling the rules that the clerics had set over the social life of Iranians. For example, although he would lift the mandatory ban on wearing veiling for women, he would still strongly discourage it and instead would encourage women to wear western style clothing. Alcohol was served widely throughout the country and a strong emphasis on a central Persian identity helped set the country on a culturally western path for the nation. Although, it's important to note that this was at the expense of people's political rights. All forms of opposition were violently suppressed. The military budget, especially towards the end of his reign, would increase exponentially, often at the expense of social programs. Plus, the rampant corruption under his rule would become painfully obvious. Most notably, when the Shah would spend hundreds of millions of dollars on a party in the middle of a desert. This lavish spending helped contribute to his undoing in the revolution. Although the main cause was how his reforms alienated the heavily religious conservative clerics who had dictated Iran's social policy based on their strict interpretation of Islam for many years. The most well known critic, Rahola Khomeini, originally sentenced to death by the Shah's regime, was eventually exiled and in exile he would continue to speak out against the government becoming very much the face of the opposition of the Shah. And so when he was finally overthrown he flew back to Iran and set up the brand new Islamic Republic that we know today. Very quickly, all the reforms put in place by the Shah were reversed and Iran became what's known as a theocracy. It would first cut diplomatic ties with Israel completely, attacking the country as quote, a cancer on earth. Iran's new government would also verbally attack what it called the godless communists, along with taking Americans hostage at the embassy there and calling for the overthrow of all the other Muslim monarchies and what they viewed as corrupt governments. This meant that the new government of Iran didn't really have any friends. This became a serious problem when the following year Iraq attacked Iran and with western backing Iran struggled to fight the Iraqi invaders. After 8 years of a brutal war that very much resembled World War 1, Iran suffered hundreds of thousands of deaths, extensive damage of its infrastructure and rising poverty in the country led to some even more serious protests in which the government responded with brutal oppression, as usual. For the current situation, we need to go back to the death of an Iranian woman named Masa Armini. She was a 22-year-old Kurdish Iranian woman who was arrested by the morality police on the 14th of September 2022 because of an improper hijab, as she was allegedly not wearing it in a way that was acceptable to the authorities. Apparently, what happened next was that in police custody, she suddenly died of a heart attack when according to her family, 
she was in perfect health. What followed was mass protests, and for the first time, this centered not only on her tragic death and police brutality, but also the structure of the Iranian government, and especially the supreme leader. You see, the supreme leader of Iran is the head of state of the country. He is appointed for a life term by the assembly of experts, whose members are selected by the Guardian Council. This council is made up of 12 members, with six being appointed by the supreme leader of Iran, and the other indirectly, as the other six are appointed by the chief justice, who is himself appointed by the supreme leader. However, this assembly of experts has never even questioned, let alone blocked a decision for a law by the supreme leader, giving the man de facto total power over Iran, despite being unelected by the Iranian people. Finally, we have the president of Iran and the parliament. These are both elected positions within the country, however, both are under the authority of the unelected guardian council, as it can block elected members of parliament from power and block laws passed there. It also has the power to block presidential candidates, who at least could potentially give limited change to the Iranian people, although under the watchful eyes of the Iranian supreme leader. This whole system has been the subject of anger for many Iranians, with this group of young Iranians swearing to the Iranian supreme leader's portrait after Khamenei made it clear whose side he is on. The authorities, like other times, have responded with brute force, smashing sympathetic pro-protesters people's cars in, brutally beating up women, and even firing live ammunition into the crowd in a bid to quell the protests. This has obviously led to opposing violence, turning many of the peaceful protests into riots. But their failure to stop them has caused these protests in particular to threaten the entire system. The government's violence has angered the protesters so much that they seem to have lost their fear. If they can keep up the protests, they would be able to paralyse the country's economy, eventually forcing a new Iranian government that could potentially listen to them and their demands. <laughs>